Hi everybody, it's Kenzie Knox and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be painting this wonderful holiday painting. So we up with, we've got a palette of paint and we've got titanium white, cerulean blue, lemon yellow, cadmium orange, ultramarine blue, aqua green, mars black, sap green, and thalo green. So go ahead and add that to your palette and grab your size 8 filbert brush and we're going to spritz down our canvas with some water and start in with some cerulean blue and just blend that into the top right corner. We're just going to blend, blend, blend. And this guy's going to be a little bit different. We're going to add some ultramarine blue to the bottom and blend that upward into the side and to the left. And we're going to add some light into the sky. So we're going to just blend in the cerulean blue, ultramarine, carrying over both colors to the left. Keep dipping into your cerulean blue and your ultramarine. We're going to leave that little gap right there. And then you need some, some more cerulean blue and a little bit of aqua. We're just going to fill that little area in right there. Rinse off your brush again, nice clean brush, and grab some titanium white. And we're just going to blend some of that titanium white up into the sky just to lighten up the sky a bit. This is a bit different technique than I've ever done, but it looks really cool in the end. So just go ahead and just follow what I'm doing with ultra with the white and the aqua and even some yellow and orange that we're going to be mixing in there with titanium white. So grab that orange and yellow and titanium white and just add in just a little bit of that up into the sky where we put the white. And rinse off your brush plenty of times just to make sure that it's clean and you don't carry any of that blue to make a green color in the sky. You can tell I'm rinsing off my brush quite a bit. I suggest you do the same. And once you're done with that, rinse off your brush. Grab some more aqua and blend that in towards the bottom of the yellow. Grab some more yellow, add a little bit more over there. Now we're grabbing our size 4 filbert brush and dipping into our uh, Mars Black and we're going to create some evergreen trees right over here on the left side, on the right side, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I get my left and right confused. And add another one right here. So now we're just working on our background and another one right here. Just with our filbert brush, just tap, 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 tap. And another big one right here. You can use a fan brush if you like, but these trees are so small, you, you can get away with using a filbert brush, really. Another one right here. And another one right here. Now we're going to go ahead and add some raw umber to our palette and take our liner brush, dip into some raw umber and we're going to draw in another tree right over here, like a little maple tree or an oak tree of some sort, but um, we're just going to draw in some branches and some twigs that's coming off the main trunk. And you can get as detailed or not as detailed as you like, it's up to you. If you're a beginner, please just stick with the basics, just like a tree trunk with a few branches coming off of it. If you're more advanced, and feel free to elaborate on the tree a bit more. I'm going to add another one over here to the left of that evergreen. And so go ahead and just add your branches, as many as you'd like. I'm going to add another tree right here, right next to it, add a little friend. <laughs> I'm really excited because it's going to be a very colorful painting and I think you'll really enjoy it in the end. So just follow step by step and slow it down if you need to or speed it up if you need to. We're going to add another tree right over here. Behind the evergreens, I guess we could have painted this in first, but I decided to add it in afterwards. And we're going to add another tree over here. And again, this does not need to be very detailed. We're just adding in some tree foliage back here. I'm going to switch over to my mini mop brush 
add some yellow ochre to my palette. Yellow ochre is a fantastic color that um, almost can go with any painting. Take some yellow ochre, some raw umber, and some white, and we're just going to tap in some foliage on those trees that we just made. Making sure we don't cover all the branches, but we want to add enough that it looks like it's covered in some leaves. And perhaps some snow, too. Add some more raw umber in the yellow ochre color. And we're just going to add some more um, brown bushes over here. And we're just going to darken up these trees just a bit, just to darken them down a bit. Then we switch back over to our filbert brush, our large filbert brush, taking some cerulean blue, and just touching up the sky just a little bit to get rid of those streaky marks. Make it a little less hazy. And once you're satisfied with that, you can simply rinse your brush and wait for the next set step. Okay, so now we're going to take our ultramarine and a little bit of titanium white, and we're just going to add in the snow. So we're going to go around the edges and darken in that area to make it more like a vignette effect so that our eyes are drawn to the center of the painting and really make that um, house that we're going to paint in really pop in color. So now we're going to add to the other side. And underneath the trees a little bit. And then we're going to add it to the bottom of the canvas as well. And once you're done with that, go ahead and smooth out some of the edges or streak marks. And then we're going to switch over to our size zero flat brush, dip into our burnt sienna, and we're going to start mapping out our house. So we're going to start with a diagonal line going down, and then a straight line going down, and that'll be the side of our house. And then we're going to take some more, oh, we're going to take some white to dry in the roof. I usually take raw sienna or burnt sienna and then end up having to paint over it, but this time we decided to go in with white. And then we're going to have a little line. Just follow me as I paint in the lines and in the directions and angles that I'm using. And you should be pretty okay. But remember that you can slow down the painting. You can pause the painting. Um, pause uh, the video if needed. It's really not a problem. Just make sure that you're following the shapes and angles and directions that I'm going in. So here's another part of the roof. And diagonal coming down and back to the burnt sienna draw the little chimney that comes down the front of the house add some burnt sienna to your palette Oh, I'm sorry, I was using raw umber, but you can use burnt sienna as well. But for this chimney, we're going to use burnt sienna. And back to sketching in the house with a raw umber. Again, just follow what I'm doing. Follow the shapes. There's another roof line. And then back to the raw umber.
So once we finish drawing in our house, we're now going to start filling in some of the sections with that raw umber color. So just fill in this area right here, and I'm going to leave out the window area so I don't have to paint that in white. Make sure you go under the roof line to give it a shadow. Just fill that in. Then I'm going to add some crimson red to my palette, as well as some um, scarlet red. I'm going to dip into some gray and some red. And I'm going to take a color that I like. You can use any shade of red that you like. I just dulled this down a bit, took some white, some gray, some red, added them together, and came up with this shade of red, which actually turned out brilliant or perfect in the end. I just painted in the main section of my house. Once you're done painting in your house, add some raw umber to that color of red that you made. And we're just going to shadow in some areas underneath the roof and along the sides of the house as well. Next, we're going to mix up some lemon yellow, some orange, some titanium white, and a little bit of yellow ochre. I'm going to come up with this um, light orangey yellow shade and we're going to color in or paint in the very front of the house, the entrance of our house. And once you're done with that, rinse off your brush and grab some ultramarine blue and titanium white. Mix that together and we're just going to block in the rest of the snow in front of the house and just a lighter shade of that blue color. Taking some more ultramarine blue, we're just going to shade in the right around the house, in the front of the house, in the side of the house, and in the very front of the house. And that's just with ultramarine blue so that it gets a very dark shadowed color. Then we're going to take that paint and blend it out a little bit, forming a little pathway in front of the house. And then we're going to take some titanium white and we're just going to paint in the roof. So we're just going to block in the rooftop. Next, with our size 2 flat brush, or size 0 flat brush, we're going to take some yellow ochre and we're just going to do um, little indications of brickwork down the chimney. And we're basically just tapping and dragging our brush just a little bit. And we're also going to intermingle some scarlet red. So grab some scarlet red and add some bricks for some scarlet red ones too. And that will really add some character to the house. Next, we're going to draw in some of the trim of the windows. So taking the color of the house that we originally created and adding some titanium white to that, we're going to start sketching in or mapping out our windows and doors.
And since I love the look of a red door, I'm going with my scarlet red and I'm just going to paint in the door with scarlet red. Taking that scarlet red, I'm also going to add the indication of bricks around the window trim. And you don't have to go this far down. I realized that afterwards it was just around the top of the windows. <laughs> I'm rinsing off my brush. I'm going to grab some yellow ochre and I'm going to add in some additional brickwork around the windows. And then grabbing some more red after rinsing off my brush. I'm just going to add the indication of bricks laid out in random places so you don't have to paint the entire house with bricks, just little areas here and there. So tap and drag, tap and drag, tap and drag, and leave spaces between so that there's that um, original color showing through. And continue adding bricks all around the house everywhere. And you can add two, three, five, six, you can add as many as you like until you're satisfied with the look of it. Once I'm satisfied with the red, I'm going to tap into my white. I'm going to start adding white bricks now around the red bricks. Just a couple here and there. Then I'm going to rinse my brush off, grab some yellow, grab some titanium white. I'm going to add another window here. So this is the side of the window. This will be a window protruding from the rooftop. So then it'll have a little top, a rooftop on top of it too, like a triangle. So I'm going to add my luminous yellow, luminous orange, luminous lemon to my palette. And I'm going to paint in my windows with white first. And then I'm going to switch over to my small brown brush and I'm going to dip into my black with lots of water so it's very liquidy. I'm going to go ahead and trace around my chimney, adding a little bit of a shadow to it. And then I decided I wanted to add some white around the bricks that I laid out um, on the house. So I'm adding white in between some of the bricks as if it were the cement. So I'm just tracing around some of the bricks and adding lines here and there. This really made the bricks stand out a lot better and added a little bit more detail to the um, painting itself. It really looked nice in the end. And once I was done with that, I switched to my size 10 flat brush. I'm going to take some luminous lemon and luminous yellow and add that to with some titanium white. And I'm going to paint in my windows. So just fill in each and every one of your windows in. And we'll go over these again to make them more bright and brilliant in color. And I'm going to add a little window to my door as well. And then I'm going to switch to my little mop brush, tap into some sap green and a little bit of the black, Mars black, and make a dark green color. And I'm going to start adding some shrubbery and some bushes over here on the side of the house. And continuing down a little bit, mixing up some more color. I'm going to add some more bushes right over here. And another one down here. And one over here on the left. And since I didn't have enough color, I'm just going to mix up some more sap green and Mars black and tap in some shrubs to the left of the house and all down a little bit ways. 
And then I'm going to also add it to the front of the house in front of that big window. And in front of the house near the chimney and go up a little bit as if the vines are going up the chimney. And on the other side of the chimney as well and in front of the chimney. And a little in front of the doorway area. I'm then going to wipe off my brush with a paper towel as much as possible so that I don't have to get it wet. And I'm going to tap into some ultramarine blue and add some more shadows to certain areas around the house. So like under the, um, near the house itself and under the bushes. Don't mind me while I adjust my canvas. <laughs> And once you're happy with your shadows, go ahead and wipe off your brush again and dip into your titanium white. And we're going to go ahead and add some snow to these bushes now. Let's just tap, 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 tap. Make sure you don't cover them all up though. We want some of that um, contrast to show through. But we want to look like everything is covered in snow though. Once you're done with that, switch over to a small fan brush and we're going to go ahead and tap into some sap green and some black. And we're just going to create another evergreen or two back here. Just add some background foliage. And then another one over here too, on the left side. I just felt like it looked a little too bare for me. And maybe one over here above the house too. I think it's really coming along nicely. And one more right there. I then decided to extend these trees over here just a little bit to make them a little bit taller to fill up some of that background area in the sky. And once you're done with that, wipe off your brush and then we're gonna grab some titanium white and we're gonna add some snow to these evergreen trees in the background. Just tap, 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 tap. Tap that snow on in. <laughs> Once you're happy with the amount of snow you have, grab your size 6 flat brush and grab some more titanium white and fill in the roof again. So we're just going to block this in again to cover up all that background color that it needs to cover. If your paint looks okay and not as transparent as mine, then you may skip this step. But my white paint is very transparent for some reason. Um, it's just a different brand of paint than I normally get. I usually get Liquitex, Liquitex Basics, but I got a different brand because it was on sale and that was just not a good decision. And then we're going to take our luminous lemon and yellow and titanium white and just fill in that last window right there and go over all our windows once again just to make them more luminous and bright in color. And if you need to, you can always slow down this video using the YouTube tutorial um, settings. It allows you to speed up, to pause, and or slow down the video if needed. So now I rinsed off my brush, I'm going to grab some ultramarine blue and some titanium white. I'm just going to add a shadow to the rooftop here. So this is the roof of the window, so it's going to come like a triangle. And then there will be a line going back. Slightly. And that will be shadowed. Then I'm going to rinse off my brush, grab some more titanium white, and just touch up some of the roof areas again. Just where it's needed. I'm going to grab my titanium white again and just cover up some of these roof areas that really need covering. I apologize for this step. You can skip ahead if you don't need this step, but I did. So now we're going to go ahead and shadow in some of the areas that need shadowing, such as this area over by the window where the sun um, is coming from the top left, I believe, so we're going to be shadowing everything um, that's below the, well, just follow along as I shadow the bottom parts of the rooftops and the sides of the rooftops too.
Continue adding shadows and highlights until you feel that your rooftop looks pretty well. You can follow me um, detail for detail if you'd like, if it's helpful. Uh, I did the best I could to make the shadow look as natural as possible. So I'm using various shades of um, light blue violet and titanium white as well as ultramarine blue and titanium white. And I'm also going over the rooftop, the edging with titanium white only to highlight them. Switching over to my small round brush, I'm going to go ahead and get that wet and tap into some sap green. I'm going to go ahead and add some shutters to the windows. And a shutter to these windows over here too. Then I rinsed off my brush, grabbed some titanium white, and added a little bit of snow to the window. And then I went around each of the windows, adding some trim and even the door too. Then I took some luminous yellow and some titanium white, or even some lemon yellow, that's fine too. And I added these two bright spots right here. I'll put two lamps right here, but I just wanted to add some bright areas right there. Then I go ahead and rinse off my brush, and then tap into some titanium white and go over the, the little areas of white again, highlighting those snow, um, snowed in areas. Then I'm gonna grab some black and some raw umber and I'm going to go under the trim and add a shadow just making it look more 3D in effect. Now I'm going to add some trim to the windows with that same color. So just add a few horizontal lines, a few vertical lines. And I'm using my size 2 flat brush to do this. Once you're done with the big window, you can move on to the smaller windows. Again, some vertical lines and some horizontal lines. Then move up to this window. And you don't have to have this many vertical and horizontal lines. You can make it just one vertical, one horizontal, or you can just leave it none at all if you're not comfortable with it. But remember, um, acrylic paint is very forgiving, so if you mess up, you can always fix it. Okay, rinsing off my brush, grabbing some orange. And some titanium white. I'm gonna go ahead and, you know what, grab some luminous orange when you do this. And we're just gonna um, shadow in, or not even shadow in, we're just gonna add some orange to some of these areas of the windows. And it just makes it look like there's something inside the window. It just looks a lot better. I guess it could be shadowing it in. I'm not really sure what it would be called. With my liner brush now, I'm going to tap into some black and some phthalo green. I'm just going to add um, da -da trim to this little window here in the front of the door. You can just use black if you'd like, but I don't like to use just black sometimes. I'm going to rinse off my brush. And taking some luminous lemon now, I'm going to go over that white trim of the door and highlight that up. Because this area is going to be really lit up by these little lamps. And I'm going to go over this area again with the luminous lemon and titanium white. And also in the windows. Just going to go over some of the areas there too. Brighten that up a bit. Then I'm going to rinse off my brush, grab some phthalo green, and add some um, foliage to the window, like a window box right there. Flower box. Add some white to that to add some snow. Going back to my black and green and phthalo green, I'm going to add some of that. Um, what is that called? It's like that tree garland. That's what it is, the garland <laughs> to the outside of the door. And then I'm going to grab some more of that um, green. You can use sap green too if you need to. I had a little um, wreath right here hanging off the chimney. Just dabbing that in. And grabbing some more titanium white going around the trim of the house, highlighting that up a bit. I am so sorry, I must have cut out the video portion of this part, but all I did was add a few of those evergreen trees to the front of the house, like two of them to the front of the house, added some lamps next to the doorway, and then I added um, some like maple trees or some oak trees, one next to the big window, and then one to the left of the house as well. I am so sorry about that.
I also added some red and yellow ornaments to the bushes in front of the house and then added two little um, like little evergreen trees next to the red door too. Going back in with my sap green, I'm going to go over the wreath. Got more sap green going over the garland around the door. Grabbing some hunter green now. You can use sap green if you'd like to. I'm just highlighting this other tree next to the door, or both of the trees next to the door in the front of the house. And then grabbing some sap green and some black and going over the garland around the doorway again, adding some contrast there. And now taking our size eight um, filbert brush, that's boar bristle brush, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some titanium white and add some snow to the trees. So now I'll be focusing on adding snow to all the trees around the house. And so I'm just taking it and sweeping it down and sweeping it down and like hooking it out, if that makes sense. And this will just make the tree look like it's got snow going in all different directions and bridges coming out towards us and away to the sides. And so it just adds a real 3D effect. Grabbing a small round brush too, my number two round brush, I want to add snow to the front of the house, the tree in front of the house. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sometimes you get tongue twisters or tongue tied in these tutorials. <laughs> But yes, so I'm going to add some snow to some of the branches, not all of them, but a lot of them. The ones that look like that, they'd catch snow. Now moving on to the next tree, to the left, we're going to add snow to these branches as well. And here we're mainly focusing on the branches in front of the sky that would have high contrast. Uh, the ones around the house you really wouldn't notice, so you don't have to um, highlight those with the white. And going back to the tree in front of the house, adding a little snow to the side of it. Then we're going to pick up some scarlet red, add a little berry here or there to the garland in front of the window. Got some more scarlet red, we're going to add a little bow to the wreath in front of the, um, <laughs> in front of the chimney. Taking some luminous red, we're going to now highlight some of these things, such as the doorway, where it's going to be nice and bright, bright and lit up. Take some more luminous red, adds to some of the ornaments in front of the house, make those glow really bright. And then now we're going to take some light blue violet, and we're just going to scumble across the pathway. Um, trying to make it look more 3D, adding some shadows, adding some highlights, um, just follow me along as I add some different colors here and there. So now I'm taking some ultramarine blue and I'm just adding in some shadows back towards the house and on the side, and then I'll take some more ultramarine blue and add it around the Christmas, not the Christmas tree, but the tree that's in front of the house that looks like an evergreen tree, and add it back there, add it back of this little tree over here. I'm really trying to add some dimension to this painting. We're going to try to make little mounds of snow along the pathway to make it look like there's the pathway is lower than the top of the snow bank. I still struggle with this sometimes, so bear with me. I'm going to add some more shadows back here behind the tree. And then just randomly along the snow along the ground. Then we're going to take some luminous yellow and some titanium white and we're just going to highlight the pathway a little bit. Make that really bright. Make sure the pathway is uh, smaller the farther away it is from us, and larger and wider as it gets closer to us. That'll make it more inviting. Makes us want to walk into the painting. Now taking some titanium white, I'm going to add a little snow mound right here next to the little doorway entrance. And the next few um, instructions are going to be kind of weird and difficult to explain, so I'm just going to let you watch and try to follow me along as I add some shadows and highlights to the snow around the yard. I'm just scumbling some white, some, um, some ultramarine blue, some light blue violet, and just trying to highlight and low light and shadow and just try to create some sort of texture among the snow. So I'll let you just watch this in peace.
Now that I'm satisfied with the texture of my little front lawn, I'm gonna go ahead and add some light blue, um, <laughs> some luminous yellow and luminous lemon to some titanium white, and I'm gonna add the highlights from the windows. So just adding that yellowish color in front of the windows and on top of the roof as well. Don't forget about that little area, that window up there. And up here on top of the little garland. And around the little lamp posts that we made. I'm going to rinse off my brush, grab some ultramarine blue and some titanium white and add a little shadow to the side of that little awning and then to the rooftop as well. Not the entire rooftop, just part of it and then part of this rooftop as well. Going back in with some titanium white, I'm just going to edge out that window right there. And then a line right there and on top. Just highlighting a few areas. Then taking that luminous lemon and luminous yellow and titanium white color, I'm going to add some lights to the garland around the door. Just tapping and dabbing. I'm also going to add it to the wreath around the chimney to make that really stand out too, nice and bright. And to the garland in front of the window. Next, I'm going to take some luminous orange and I'm going to add some more orange to the window areas to make it look like there really is something inside the windows. Perhaps it's curtains or it's just shadows, but I just wanted to make this look a little more orangey in color. Make it stand out a little bit more. And you can do it right over the window and the trim of the window too, it's okay. Then I'm going to take some luminous lemon and add some dots over here to make it look like maybe that's a Christmas tree inside or some, some sort of shining object <laughs> or like a Christmas tree. Grabbing some luminous red, I'm gonna go over the wreath that's hanging on the chimney to really make that bright and luminous in color. Then I'm gonna take some black with my small round brush and go ahead and add some detail to the, um, to the bow, adding some shadows to it. Making it seem 3D and popping out more on the wreath. So now we're going to draw the figures in front of the doorway. Now you can stop at this point if you're a beginner and you don't feel comfortable drawing people in um, a painting. This painting is quite complete without the people in it, but I really wanted to work on my people's um, painting skills. So I decided to draw in these people. So taking some luminous red and some titanium white, I'm going to start in with the woman on the left side, or uh, right side, I'm sorry, the right side. And I'm just working on her little cape and then her little um, coat. And I'm just starting with some simple shapes and just mapping that out to the height that I want it to be. Um, remember, you can always fix this mistake, so if you mess up, don't worry about it. But just try to work with general um, shapes like triangles and rectangles and um, squares. So try to remember that there's a waist, so you want to go in at the waist and back out at the bottom. But you don't want the waist to be too thin and narrow, you want it to be just wide enough. And then don't forget about the shoulders, an arm that'll come down, and then her other arm. Now once I mapped out the woman, I'm going to start mapping out the male figure, using black for his hair. So I'm going to have him sort of facing the woman. And I apologize how long it takes me to draw out these figures. I am, am new to this skill, so bear with me while I trace it out. So now I'm working on his shoulders and his arms. I'm just tracing it all out in black. So he'll have a black trench coat and maybe a green scarf. So now I'm going down to the bottom of his coat and, and then his legs down below.
and decide to take a little bit off the left and then I decide to add in another arm on the left side so I'll be holding a basket perhaps a poinsettia basket Once I'm done with his legs and feet, I'm going to go in with her legs and feet. So she'll be a little bit behind him, and he'll be a little bit in front of her, so just coming straight down with her legs. You won't really see her shoes too much, so and I'll just be giving the indication that she's walking forward. We can just extend him a little bit more to make him seem a little bit taller. Then I'm going to go in with the titanium white and add a little scarf that I'll later paint in maybe green or red, we'll see. And then I'm going to go over with the um, luminous red or scarlet red and paint in the coat of the female. And then I'm going to take my little brush I'm going to get rid of a little area to make her arms stick out more, so like the space between her arm and her jacket. Then I'm going to take a little black and I'm going to add a little space for her other arm where his jacket would be showing through and her arm would be clenched around his arm, if that makes sense. <laughs> then going in with some luminous yellow and titanium white, I'm just going to add that bright yellow hue around her top of her coat, the hood of her jacket, as if it were like maybe white fur that's just um, reflecting the bright glow of the house. And then taking some black and going around her jacket again, just etching it out. Now I see have a skin tone of titanium white, orange, yellow, and a touch of black or brown. I'm just making a skin color, just, I don't know, just any skin color. I'm just adding in the semblance of a face. So it could be the side of the face, um, the front, or, yeah, just a profile sort of look, but not too much of a profile because I can't really do the characteristics of a face yet. Portraits are my next hub, uh, mission, <laughs> by the way, but I won't get to that for probably a while. I'm still working on figurines. Grabbing some more black, I'm going to work on some shadows of her hood. And up top on her hood too, where there'd be little dimples. And then taking some scarlet red or a darker red shade, I'm going to go add some shadows to where her jacket would be um, rippling. And I'm going to take some black and add maybe belt area to her waist, and then some more ripples down the back of her coat deepening in that darkness to make them really um, present. Then moving up to the top portion of her jacket, I'm now going to add the shadows up top. So around her shoulder blades and her back, or her bottom portion of her back, because the top shoulders will be the brightest part and then I'll get darker. There will be the shadow of the hood. Once you're happy with the highlights and shadows, we can go ahead with some luminous red and really highlight some of these areas, such as her shoulders and arms and some of her back and some of the back of her jacket as well. Then we're going to go ahead and add some mittens, so that it doesn't look like she doesn't have any hands. <laughs> then we're going to add a little poinsettia basket in his hand, so his hand doesn't look like um, it's just hanging there. So we'll draw in just a little handle of the basket and then the basket itself, and then we'll take um, some red afterwards and we'll add in some poinsettia, some red and some greens. But for now we're going to take some green and add it to his scarf to make a green scarf. And then we're going to take some luminous lemon, titanium white, and outline her little um, jacket to make it look like it's uh, reflecting the lights of the house and his jacket as well. As well as the basket, too. Don't forget the feet. <laughs> so now we're going to go ahead in with some red 
Add in the poinsettias. And then we're going to take some of the luminous yellows and titanium white and add some lights to the tree right here. So add them swirling up and out to the branches. Then we're going to take that same color and add some lights to this little evergreen right over here. Then we're going to take some ultramarine blue and titanium white and add a little shadow for our figures. And then we're going to take some titanium white and add a little chimney smoke, starting really thin and then getting wider. That always makes the house look cozy. And then we're going to take that luminous lemon, luminous yellow, and titanium white, add a little bit more light to the areas that are reflecting from the windows and to the ground as well, to the snow areas. Scumble that color in there. So next we're going to take some Mars Black and we're going to add in a nice little lamp post right here. And this will be one of our final details to our painting, so it's very exciting. We're almost done. We're going to make a little thick base, get narrower as we get to the top, and then we're going to add our little lamp on the top of it, which is going to be like an upside down triangle, and then we're going to connect it, or like a bowl shape, more like a bowl shape. Then connect the top, and then create a little swoop going down, and a swoop going down on the other side, and then filling that in with black. Rinse off our brush. I'm going to take some black and just add a little detail right here and going down underneath the lamp. Add a little arm post thing right there that they always have. Rinse off our brush, grab some titanium white. And we're just going to fill in the lamp areas. And we're going to put our luminous color, just blocking that in real quick. Then we're going to take some titanium white and add some highlights to this lamp post. So on that top of that little T post thing, then on top of the lamp itself, and then along the sides, and the base. And then we're going to take luminous lemon and luminous yellow and highlight the inside of the lamp, keeping the orange color down to the bottom and the lighter yellow color towards the top. I'm struggling a bit because my paint underneath is a bit wet, so it's not taking as well as it should. But we'll do what we can. And you can always let it try and come back. And then we're going to do some black to go back over those lines, make it look a little more 3D in shape. Then we're going to take some sap green, titanium, and black, sorry, sap green and black, and draw in our little wreath, or paint in our wreath. And we're going to take some scarlet and we're going to try to create a bow. Be careful if your paint is wet, it'll turn like a mucky brown color and that is not what you want to do. So if you must, um, you can always wait for your paint to dry before moving forward or we'll just move on to the next step before moving forward. But I'm trying to create a bow on the top of the wreath, but I think we're going to have to wait a minute for it to dry. But we'll try to draw down the little ribbons. And then we're going to do this little ribbon thing around the pole of the lamp base. So taking some white going to create the little indications of the little ribbon going down it. And then we'll go over it with the red, the crimson red, or luminous red. And then we'll go back to our bow with some scarlet red and create the rest of the bow. 
And I decided to go back in with white because it wasn't showing as red as I wanted it to. So we'll start with the white and then we'll go in with the red afterwards. So once it's had some time to dry, I'm going to take some scarlet red and go back over it, making it much more brighter red in color and more luminous too, and brilliant. I'm going to take some light permanent green and just highlight the top portion of the wreath that will be illuminated from the lamp post. Then take some black and we'll shadow in our ribbon, making it more 3D in appearance. Going around the knot right now and then underneath the ribbons. It's these little details that really add a lot to your painting and I know they're time consuming but it's really worth it in the end I promise. And now we're done our painting, so I hope you enjoyed this YouTube tutorial. I know it was a bit long, but it really came out really beautiful, I think. Please remember to like this video and to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to check out my Patreon channel as well. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Okay, bye!